Hey ladies, um, what's up? This is your girl, the Bronze Goddess, and this is a quick video. It's not an eyeshadow tutorial, it's not a lock tutorial. Um, this is just a little bit of real talk. Um, the reason why I'm making this video, and you can probably tell by the title, I'm making this video because I ran across a picture of Solange Knowles. And Solange, for those of you that don't know, uh, Solange Knowles is the younger um, sister to Beyonce Knowles. And she, she isn't as popular, but she's a singer in her own right. And she's um, she seems to be a, somebody who is very eccentric. And she kind of marches to the beat of her own drum. She's a, she's kind of a maverick, which I love. I love being a maverick. I consider myself a maverick as well. Um, but anyway, there's a picture of her that I'm going to leave the link in my description box to because I don't want to get in trouble by putting the picture up here. But I'm going to leave the link in my description box. But there's a picture of, of uh, Solange, and she's she basically just has, like, she had a big chop done. And because she's going natural. For those of you that watched the movie Good Hair or you watched her on Oprah talking about the movie Good Hair, the Chris Rock movie, but she was saying that she spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every year. I mean, seriously, an obscene amount of money on weaves and wigs and lace fronts and all that kind of thing. And she was saying that, you know, she want, she got to a point where she wanted to um, see what her own hair's texture was about and um, kind of grow and nurture and develop her own hair. And so she decided to do the big chop and go natural. And, you know, she has this picture of her rocking the, it's a big chop and it's very, very short. Like anybody else's big chop would be. It's a very, very short style. But she's rocking it. She's got a cute dress on and cute shoes. And I think she looks fabulous with her big chop. I think she was working her big chop. But I was reading the comments and almost all of the comments was like, she needs a weave. Ooh, what's going on? What's wrong with Solange Knowles? She needs a weave. Oh, my God. Ooh, somebody give this child a perm fast. Oh, please, somebody just tie her down and perm her hair. And that really got under my skin. Like, I wasn't supposed to be making a video today. It's actually on my way out the door. But when I saw that, it just really, really bugged me that why do we, as African Americans, feel, some of us feel, like we need a weave or we need a perm What's wrong with our hair? What's wrong with the hair that grows out of your scalp? I think that natural hair is some of the most beautiful hair on the planet. There is something to be said about a beautiful fro. Something to be said about you know, the two strand twists and the braiding styles that we have. Our history is deeply uh, intertwined, interlocked with hair braiding that is I mean we've been braiding hair forever and I think it's gorgeous and I love our hair I love our texture of hair I wouldn't trade my grade of hair for anybody I love my hair because I can perm my if I so choose I can perm my hair I can weave my hair there, there is I don't know any other race of people that can do as much to their hair as we black people can so I don't know why we all just can't embrace our hair. Why do you have? Why do you feel like you have to straighten your hair or get a long uh, European-looking weave for you to feel pretty or for you to feel like you fit in? I guess you know. I don't know. It just really, really bugged me. I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe I'm being too sensitive. Maybe I'm being over dramatic. But you let me know. Why is something wrong with the girl rocking her own natural hair? I, you know, it's in Hollywood, you know, with this, with the, the singers and the celebrities and the actresses and almost every African American female that you see represented in, in mainstream media or on TV, they normally have weaves and wigs and perms and things like that. And as soon as somebody tries to buck the norm and just be herself, everybody has a problem with that. What's wrong with loving yourself the way that you are? What's wrong with saying, you know, yeah, the perms and weaves and wigs work for you, eh, but they don't work for me. I'm going to do this. Like, what's wrong with being different? What's wrong with being a maverick? And it's like the same reason why I don't call my hair dreadlocks, because my hair doesn't look dreadful to me. And that's where the whole the word came, dreadlocks came from, from the, from the history that I read about. And I read extensively, read and researched before I locked my hair. I refuse to call my hair dreadlocks because I don't think my hair looks dreadful. And to be honest, I know everybody doesn't know that, but every time somebody calls my hair dreadlocks inside, I cringe. And even if they're giving me a compliment inside, I'm like, 
thank you. But I'm always like, my hair is not dreadlocks. My hair is locks. I have locks. I have, my hair is locked and I have locks. My hair does not look dreadful. I think my hair looks rather cute. And so no, I have locks. But anyway, I know that's neither here nor there. But I'm just saying that um, hopefully I want to encourage some of you out there who are contemplating the big chop or you just did the big chop or you just, um, you're having issues with the big chop. There are going to be a lot of people out there who think you're crazy for cutting your hair off, but you are still beautiful. And, you know, it's so funny for me because when I see, when people are telling me and I'm walking down the street and I'm here in Atlanta and people are like, I love your hair. Oh, your locks are so pretty. They say stuff like, I would never lock my hair. Or locks aren't for me, but I love your hair. People, do you realize, do they realize that pretty hair, pretty long hair, pretty long natural big afros and all that stuff, it all starts with a big chop. That's the first step. You have to embrace the big chop if you ever want to get long locks. So you have to like, that's the thing about like being natural is it's not an overnight thing. It's not a quick couple hours in the beauty chair and you've got your style. It takes time. So when people, to me, when somebody compliments my hair um, now, especially like for after all the work that I put in, it's a really amazing feeling for me. I Seriously, every compliment hits me to my heart because I know all that I went through to get to this point. I know like it was a struggle. And I, especially me doing it myself, me starting my own locks, it's, it, it feels extra special to me because it's like, I did this. I don't even do hair. I always say that. I don't even do hair, but I managed to do my hair and I got it to the point where it looks good. I get more compliments on my hair as a natural than I ever did with a perm. When my hair, when I thought my hair was banged out, because there, so many people had it and it's so easy to achieve. Somebody see my hair, go to the beautician and get their hair done like that. It isn't the same thing. You like my locks. If you want locks, you have to put in the time that I put in. You have to be willing to put in the years. You have to be willing to do the big chop. And, you know, I apologize if I'm all over the place. I'm always all over the place. I'm such a Gemini. But um, I want to encourage you out there um, who are going through the big chop. Everybody may not understand what you're going through, but for you to get where you want to be, you know this is a necessary step and you have to embrace it. You know, you can do a little, put little headbands on and, and put you some big earrings on and just accessorize it and embrace it because it's all a part of the process. It's all a part of the journey. And for you to get where you want to be, for those of you who are like fantasizing about this big, huge afro and you want to do cornrows and you want to do uh, two strand twists and you want to do all these beautiful beautiful natural hairstyles that you've seen and you want to do locks shout out to my lock community hey ladies hey hey fellas hi i'm rocking the rasta girl eyeshadow yeah but hey family for you to get to where you want to be you have to do that step and you know what i know this is all over the place but it's all it's kind of like you know a metaphor for life you start off, you cannot despise meager beginnings. Hold on one second. Why does my daughter think she's security? Okay. Uh, anyway, but like I was saying, it's in a way, and you know, to me, it's kind of a metaphor for life, and you cannot despise um, meager beginnings because, you know, a lot of times in the beginning, people can't understand where you're going or what you're trying to do. I remember for like me, and um, I had a great job, but I decided to go to culinary school. And people thought I was crazy for going to culinary school when I already had a great job. And I already was making a great living and all this. Like, why are you going to culinary school? Because I understood the big picture. And now I have a nice job working for one of the biggest, um, biggest, most well-known chefs, not just in the country, but in the world. In the world. And now people can kind of see where I was going. They can kind of see my vision. I knew that... I didn't just want to be a good cook, I wanted to be a good chef. And I knew that for me to, you know, make those moves, I had to take these steps. And in life, sometimes people think you're crazy for what you're trying to do, but you have to be, you have to believe in yourself, you have to stand firm on what you believe in. And, you know, I know that might be too deep for some of you, you might be like, it's just hair. It is just hair, but it, for me, it, it ties into like life in a way. With like, you know, when you have your hair and your hair is cut short, people don't see where you're going. They don't see your vision. And if you can see your vision, that's all that matters. You know, if uh, I think it's T.D. Jakes that said it best. Um, 
If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. So if you believe, you know, in yourself, I know I'm like all over the place, but I hope you guys get my central point. Started off about locks and now I'm getting ready to preach. But anyway, if you can if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. And what I what I wanted to the point I wanted to get home for that is that a lot of times people can't see what you're doing and they can't see your vision. Because when God gives you something, he gives it to you. So people can't understand why are you still uh, why are you still in school? Why are you why are you struggling when you can just do this? Why are you with why are you staying with this guy when this guy had more money? They don't know what God has for you. They don't know what what God gives to you, he gives to you. And everybody won't always understand the path that you're on. As long as you understand it. And as long as you keep a close relationship with God, as long as you two are back and forth with communication, then everything is going to be okay. But I just wanted to say that for some of you who may need that word of encouragement. You may have came here for locks, but you stay here for the word every now and then, you know. But anyway, I love you ladies. For those of you who are going through the big chop, you do you. You embrace it. You love it. You, you know where you're going, so you don't worry about what anybody else has to say. It's all about you. This is your world. You know, the only person you have to make happy is you. You please yourself. You please God. That's all that really matters. Ultimately, strangers on the street, they just, you know what I mean? Like people, like I said, people compliment my hair now, but when I did, you really, I had to do the big chop to get to this point. You know, you have to go to school to get to that level. You have to do things you don't want to do to get to that level. My daddy always says to get what you've never gotten, you must do what you've never done. Like. I so understand that for me to get to the chef level that I want to be, I have to work like nights. I have to work weekends. I don't, I used to say, I don't, I don't do nights. I don't do weekends. I don't do that. But for me to get where I want to be, it's a necessary step. So same thing with your big chop. It's a necessary step. Stay encouraged. You know, I love you. I will see you in the next video. Solange, though I know you will never see this video. That's okay. You are beautiful with your big chop. And, and anybody else who can't see that, they're crazy. That you are absolutely gorgeous and you are working your big chop way better than I ever did, honey. You're working it. And who cares? If everybody else in Hollywood wants to do wigs and weaves and perms and lace fronts and all that, let them do that. You do you. That's the only person you have to make happy at the end of the day is you. And I respect you for being a maverick and saying, I don't care what everybody else does. I'm going to do what I want to do. Girl, preach. Preach church tabernacle.